So if we switch x and y here, we have x is equal to y squared minus 6y plus 9. Now, if we're trying to solve for y here, we've got a y squared and we have a y. So is there a way that we can rewrite the right side of this expression? We can factor, well not factor out a y, but we can factor the right side. What happens when we factor the right side? This is a special type of quadratic here. Does anybody remember what this is called when we get the same factor? No? Perfect square trinomial. Okay, a perfect square trinomial. We don't run into those as much as the difference of perfect squares. But a perfect square trinomial is when you factor it and you get the exact same factors. Now, what are we supposed to do with that? We're supposed to write it as y minus 3 squared. Now, we can solve for y. How do we get rid of squaring something? Square roots. Marvelous. Okay. Now, uh, we just got done with square root equations, and I tried to emphasize that when you put the square root, you should include the positive and the negative. But if we want this to be a function, we can't include positive and negative. We've got to kind of keep it exclusive. So let's just consider the positive square root of x is equal to y minus 3. And then add 3 to both sides, but be careful with this. The plus 3 doesn't go under the square root, okay? It is added after the square root, um, so don't put the plus 3 under the square root. Make sure that it is clear that your square root is only over the x. I like to put the little tail on my square root uh, symbol. I would suggest that you do the same. It's kind of up to you, but please make sure that it is clear whether or not that is under the square root or not. Okay? So the inverse of a quadratic is a square root. Makes sense. Because to undo squaring something, you take the square root. That's the relationship between inverses is how do you undo it. Okay? So on this practice problem, we've got a cubic. More you think the inverse is going to be? A cube root. So, switch x and y, we have x is equal to the square root of y plus 7. The y is stuck under that square root, so we need to start by squaring both sides. So, we get x squared is equal to y plus 7. Then we subtract 7 from both sides. So, we get that our inverse function is equal to x squared minus 7. Now in your practice problem, I modified this just slightly. I've changed what's under the square root. Instead of it being the square root of x plus 7, it's the square root of x plus 7. Um, so that's going to change things just a little bit. So same premise. Okay, still switch x and y. It's just now we're going to have to use our uh, logarithms and whatnot to be able to solve, and that would be e to the y, not e to the x, okay, to be able to solve for y because y is stuck in that exponent. So to get it out of the exponent, we've got to write this in logarithmic form, okay? We need to write this as the natural log of x is equal to y. Okay, if you've got to check it, remember we can do the swoop. The base of the natural log is e. e to the y equals x to confirm that. So the inverse, which we already knew this, we talked about it, of e to the x is the natural log of x. Okay, very simple example there. Let's look at a different base. Okay, if our function is 4 to the x minus 1, switch x and y. Again, y is stuck in our exponent. The only way to get it out of the exponent is to write it in logarithmic form. The base is 4. So we've got to use the common, well, not the common log, but the log. Remember, the base of an exponential is the same as the base of the logarithm. And then the other stuff kind of switches places. So the y minus 1 was with the 4, so now the x is going to be with the 4. And then you need to add 1 to both sides to get y by itself. 
So F inverse here is the log base 4. And I'm going to put X in parentheses itself here to indicate to myself that that plus 1 is not inside the logarithm. The plus 1 is outside of the logarithm. Only the X is inside the logarithm. Okay. Well, what if we start with something in logarithmic form? How do we find its inverse? Well, we're going to put it in exponential form. So switch x and y here. The y is stuck inside the logarithm, so we need to start by writing in exponential form. Here's the swoop. 2 to the x is equal to y plus 3. Still got to isolate y, so we subtract 3 from both sides. So that says f inverse of x is equal to 2 to the x. Make sure that it's clear that that minus 3 is not in the exponent, that it's at the end of the exponential. That's very different. 2 to the x minus 3 versus 2 to the x minus 3. That makes a big difference. So I wrote it in exponential form. So the base of the exponential, what it's equal to, or excuse me, base exponent, what it's equal to. Okay? So, uh, college peeps.